what? You thought because of coronavirus you weren't gonna get no science. Can you see your life? This corona lockdown lesson is all about the relative formula mass and also moles. By the end of this lesson you should be able to calculate moles. So get your equipment ready and have a go at these retrieval questions. Pause if you need more time, yeah? Cool. Get them red pens ready to mark and correct. Atoms are made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. Atoms have a radius of 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. And isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. So why are we studying this now? Relative formula masses help us identify different molecules and moles help scientists monitor the dosage of drugs that they use. This lesson is linked to the atomic structure and also chemical changes section of your chemistry GCSE. These are the different success criteria that we'll go over in this lesson. I'll refer back to these near the end of each activity to see what level you're currently working at. And if you don't get this by the end of this lesson, that is cool. I didn't pattern this until I was in college. And a lot of you are a lot smarter than I was when I was your age. Anyway, let's get this started. This is what the periodic table that you'll get in your GCSE looks like. It's actually such a beautiful structure. It's arranged in vertical columns called groups from 1 to 0, left to right. At GCSE, you can skip the middle section which are the transition metals. The horizontal rows are your periods. For this section of your GCSE, we only need to worry about one number for each element. Let's look at helium for an example. You see that each box has four pieces of information. The massive number on the top is the relative atomic mass. Then we have the element symbol. Next is the element name. And finally, the bottom smaller number is the atomic number. I'll just quickly put these numbers into perspective. Let me show you what the atomic structure of helium looks like. And as we saw, this is associated with this entry in the periodic table. Now look at these two other helium species. Both of them have the same associated entry. Pause the video so that you can deep what has changed and then use that difference to work out what these numbers actually mean. Well, the relative mass number was four, now it's five. Why was it four before? We had four particles in the middle, in our nucleus. Remember that the protons and neutrons make up the mass of the atom since the electrons have very very low masses. So the relative mass number comes from the number of protons and the number of neutrons that you have in your nucleus. Over here, it is 5 because we have an extra neutron in these species. Now there are 5 subatomic particles, not 4. The atomic number hasn't changed though. Which subatomic particle has not changed in any of these species? It's the proton. The number of protons stay the same. That's why they are the same element. So your atomic number is the number of protons that you have in your nucleus. Looking back at the success criteria, we can pattern the first two blocks in one go. So find the elements that have these relative atomic masses. Pause, attempt and then play when you've worked out the answers. Here are the answers, mark and correct in red pen. But what's going on here though? 63.5 for the mass of copper and chlorine is similar. Its relative atomic mass is 35.5. Answering this will bring us to that grade 8 ability. So do you might want to hear a secret? You're already halfway to understanding that grade A ability now. Let's bring back them to helium species. These two are isotopes of helium. Isotopes have the same number of protons but different numbers of neutrons. Since they have the same number of protons, they are the same element. If something has two protons, then it's helium. If it has three protons, then it's lithium, and so on for the rest of the periodic table. Another way of representing these will be to have a sphere that contains the relative atomic mass and the element symbol. 
if you had a random sample of helium, there will be a natural ratio of these two isotopes. In reality, virtually all of the helium in the sample will be the one that has the RAM, the relative atomic mass, of 4. But let's look at chlorine for an example. Notice that naturally, we have two isotopes of chlorine but at different ratios. So, in a given sample of chlorine, 3 out of 4 atoms will have a relative atomic mass, a RAM, of 35 and 1 out of 4 will have a RAM of 37. Doing the calculations, we see that the chlorine with the 35 RAM is 3 over 4 times 35. That gives us 26.25 as our mass. The chlorine that is 37 is 1 over 4 times 37. That means that chlorine isotope contributes a mass of 9.25. Then we just sum our masses together and that gives us 35.5. That's why you have some elements with 0.5s or decimals in their relative atomic masses. Now for the meat and potatoes of the lesson. Atoms are very small. The real masses of atoms are way too small to be useful to do any calculations with. So we use a standard to help us compare elemental masses with each other. For various reasons that you don't need to worry about, the isotope carbon-12 is our standard. That means that our relative atomic mass of an element is the average mass of an element compared to 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. I know it's a bit nuts, but watch this, yeah? Here is an atom of carbon-12. We can tell that it's carbon because it has 6 protons and its RAM is 12 because we have 6 protons and 6 neutrons. Therefore, there are 12 subatomic particles in its nucleus. So far, so good. Now remember our helium atom had a RAM of 4. Let's bring that long definition for RAM back. RAM is the average mass of an element compared to 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Well, the mass of carbon-12 is 12. And what is 1 12th of 12? That is 12 divided by 12, which is 1. This is the equivalent to the relative mass of a proton or a neutron. Remember, carbon-12 has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. 6 plus 6 gives us 12. Now, this is the key thing to understand. A helium atom is roughly 4 times larger than 1 12th of a carbon-12 atom. That means that we have four particles in the nucleus, two protons and two neutrons. This is what we mean when we say that the mass of an element is relative. We are comparing it to the mass of 1 12th of carbon-12. It's relative to the mass of carbon-12. Relative formula mass is the total of your rams added up in the ratio shown in the chemical formula. Take down these steps. Number one, you have to write down the formula of your chemical. Number two, find the ram of each element. Number three, you multiply the rams by the number of atoms of that element in the formula. And then finally, number four, you just sum your values together. I'll do this work example, then you can work out the others, all right? In this example, I need to work out the relative formula mass, the RFM, for carbon dioxide. Step 1, the formula is CO2. Step 2, carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. Step 3, I have 1 carbon, so that's 12 times 1 equals 12, and I have 2 oxygen, so 16 times 2 gives us 32. And then step 4, 12 add 32 gives us a relative formula mass for carbon dioxide of 44. Now work out these chemicals, pause, attempt and play. Here is the answer for water. Here is the answer for magnesium chloride. Now this is where you may have had a bit of an issue but don't worry, it's not that deep. Watch this yeah. The formula is the first step. Step 2, the RAM, that's easy. The tricky bit is here. Whenever you get brackets, you need to always look at the small number that you have on the right hand side. 
this small number to the right of your bracket tells you how much you have to multiply the bracket by. Inside our bracket, we have one oxygen and one hydrogen. The number on the right is two, so we multiply those elements by two. So we have two oxygens and two hydrogens. Summing all of that, that gives us 74. If you weren't able to clock that one before, don't worry, I've got this example that you can have a go at, okay? Try and work out calcium nitrate. Again, the tricky bit is here. You have to remember that what you're multiplying by, the small number on the right, only applies to the elements in the bracket. Inside the bracket, we have three oxygens and the small number to the right is two. So three times two gives us six oxygens. The relative formula mass of calcium nitrate is 164. If you're doing the foundation paper, you can lock off right now, yeah? But you might as well stay. If you learn some of the higher tier stuff, you've got a chance of then doing the higher tier paper. For your GCSE chemistry, you need to be able to state that moles is equal to the relative atomic mass or the relative formula mass of a substance in grams. In simple English, that just means that if you weigh out one mole of a substance, the mass on your top pan balance is equal to the RAM or RFM, the RAM or the relative formula mass in grams. So one mole of helium will have a mass of four grams and one mole of carbon will have a mass of 12 grams. The mole also helps us complete chemical calculations because it's the name for a number. Just like a dozen is 12, one mole is this number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23. I don't even, I can't, I, I can't even say how big this number is. It's ridiculously large. That's the number of particles that's in one mole of something. So in this picture, that's one mole of carbon and that it has that many particles inside it. 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Let me put that number into perspective. Just count one second, yeah? All right, imagine how many seconds they have, they've been in reality. So since the start of time in the Big Bang up to now, one mole is roughly a million times larger than that. So a mole is a lot larger than the amount of seconds that, that they have actually been, which is... I'm finished. It's, it's too big. It's, it's massive. Now, I beg of you, learn this equation triangle, okay? Moles is equal to mass over MR, which is the same as saying mass equals moles times MR or MR is equal to mass over moles. MR just means molar mass, which is the same as our RAM and RFM before your relative atomic mass or your relative formula mass. Here's a worked example. How many moles are there in 80 grams of calcium? Moles is mass over MR. So 80 grams from our question over 40, because that's our relative atomic mass, our RAM, that gives us two moles. Here's another example. How many moles are there in 22 grams of carbon dioxide? Moles is mass over MR. The mass is 22, so that goes on top. We find out the molar mass, which is our relative formula mass of 44. 22 over 44 gives us 0.5 moles. Now, have a go at these examples. Pause, attempt, and then play. Here are the answers. You should also be comfortable rearranging the equation to work out mass. Mass is equal to moles times MR. So now have a go at working out the masses for these questions. All right, here are the answers. And you better not be cheating. Make sure you're actually attempting these questions and marking your work properly. If you need to go back, go back and have another go, okay?